Just after the Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS imposed a sanction on Mali for the constitutional takeover of power. The region gets heat as military officers in Burkina Faso announce the suspension of the constitution, the dissolution of the government parliament, and the closure of the country's border from midnight. We take a look at the recent coup in the region. Also on the breakfast this morning is members of the organized labor are preparing for nationwide protests this week over the plant fuel subsidy removal. The federal government has suspended a petrol subsidy removal. What are the implications of this for the Petroleum Industry Act? And don't forget, we also will be looking through today's national dailies, analyzing the biggest stories of the day. And of course, we have the top trending stories on the program this morning. A very good morning to you. Welcome to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. I'm Kofi Bartels. And I am Messi Bokpo. It's a very beautiful um, Tuesday morning. It's good to be back on your screen. Fantastic. Mercy, lots to talk about. And we always, always will bring our listeners the latest news and analysis right here on The Breakfast. Um, fantastic day. Uh, really, really sort of a roller coaster what was happening in Burkina Faso yesterday. Um, we'll talk about that. It was almost like a movie, you know, starting from Sunday into Sunday night, then Monday into Monday evening. And what was interesting was that the Burkina Faso national team were also playing um, at the African Nations Cup. So I do not know if the, the uh, mutiny or the, um, the protesting soldiers were waiting for the game to end before announcing the coup. But we'll look at all that going into the program today. Um, of course, top trending stories. Let's uh, get into that. Kanu government revoking the license of private schools in the entire state. That's something that, you know, you only hear of in a few states, the entire states. Mercy. And that's because, uh, you know, it's as a result of the incident that happened. I mean, the, the kid that got killed. Very sad. Now, when I actually read that story, you want to see very sad. Those who should be protecting us are the ones taking advantage. It was reported, allegedly, that um, the proprietor of that school was involved in the kidnap of this young lad and really really sad but however the issue of jungle justice because we also saw videos and stories uh, yesterday where some angry youths in kanu decided to set the school ablaze and jungle justice has never been a solution to anything we constantly say that as long as uh, you know two wrongs two wrongs can never make a right as long as the people feel very angry and agitated and that's because over time people feel that they have lost trust in the government and they cannot you know wait for the law to take its cost. But we do not live in a zoo. Uh, we live in the country where there are laws and regulation and we have a government and you have institutions that should be uh, responsible for all of this uh, crime and criminalities and should sort out all of the differences. That's why we have a government. That's mm. why we have a government. And for every time you have people take the laws into their hand, it doesn't, it doesn't solve the problem. It just brings us back to a period where it feels like there's no law, there's anarchy and all of that. Really, really sad, but um, justice for this young lad is what everyone is anticipating and looking forward to. I mean, I mean, look at the, the, the pretty, beautiful, wonderful child, five year old. Um, what, what sort of human being will kill a child, you know? And, and, and online throughout the weekend, justice for Hanifa was trending. Um, no less a person than the first lady of the federal republic of nigeria i mean aisha buhari doesn't say too much you know and she had to put out a video um from an islamic cleric who was condemning the killing of this girl it's um one of those stories that will get a lot of publicity and will paint the image of the country bad and and it, it, it's it, it's a call i'm sure a time for all the leaders in this country um from state governors to senators to um, you know, regular people, CSOs, and media to condemn these actions. No, Th this, this was not the this was not the only one that um, uh, that happened. Uh, another one took place on Monday in a neighboring state. A child was also kidnapped as well, and so it's brought up the conversation. You know, of um, the safety of of, of 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 our children when they go to school. 
Um, the man on the left of your screen is the proprietor, I think. Tanko is his name, of the school, Noble Kids Academy in um, uh, Nasarawa local government area of Kanu State. And the girl was a student in the school where he was a proprietor. So, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's unimaginable, unbelievable, that the teachers who are meant to protect the girl were the ones who arranged her abduction. And, and people, you know, commenting as this was trending online, were, were wondering how they could collect the ransom from the parents of this child of six million naira and still kill the child. So no, what, what, happened, so what, ha what happened was that the, sorry, Macy, was that the, um, the culprits confessed that when they received the money, the girl noticed or realized who Tanko, the school writer, was. And so he said, ah, this girl has seen who I am. I can't allow her because when she goes, she's going to report me. And he said he now bought 100 Naira poison. Mercy. 100 Naira poison. Rat poison. Of 100 Naira. And then, you know, poisoned the girl. And they did not just do that. Oh, my God. They, 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 they buried her in a shallow grave in the school. They just they buried her in a shallow grave in the school after collecting the money. And, and it's, it's just a heartbreaking episode and sequence so, of events. So the case is, um, this is really sad. I mean, uh, but there are 1,001 Hanifas out there. And the issue of security constantly has to be, you know, national concern. And we always wait I mean, for one particular, look, look, we always wait for that. one particular, so, because yeah. we, 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 we come back, it brings us back to the fact oh, that man. we need to ensure that there is security. I mean, lives and properties are protected and that we do not pamper this person and that the law, because what's happening right now and with the fact that you have some angry youths and persons setting the school ablaze, that's, it shows that there's a deficit, trust deficit. They do not believe in the system to bring justice, the uh, judicial system. They don't believe in the police force to ensure that justice is actually meted and they have decided to take the laws into their hands. But that's not an excuse. Yeah, but, but, the, the general uh, conversation uh, yes. would be that we should ensure that, you know, life Lives and properties are protected. You, if you constantly see, I mean, some people have queried how the government, the federal government, and the body language of the government in this dispensation has tackled the issue of um, insurgents, but kidnappers, and banditries. And that's also, you know, on. It goes a long way to constantly encourage this crime and criminalities and those who are perpetrating, I mean, those who are carrying out this crime, those kidnappers. Because they know that, what, what would the law do? What's going on? And sometimes you have issues where there are collaboration with security and um, personnel. And it's, it's really, really sad. But this is just also a signal. I mean, it's okay for you have the governor, the president, and everyone talking about it. It brings us back to the same conversation that we're having, that the protection of lives and properties across the entire federation should be a priority. It shouldn't even be a reminder, because every government should know that that's the first responsibility that they owe. So yes, this is one, one case. And up until today, we're still talking about um, uh, Lye Shaibo. We, we have all, all of a sudden forgotten about the issue. Now, do we know whether she's alive or not? It, it brings us back to questioning the issue of um, safe school initiative. But this is not even the case of safe school initiative because the story about her kidnap that was perpetrated by a proprietor of a school that should protect her, it, you know, calls for a lot of concern. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 I mean, a very important point you've raised about, you know, uh, jungle justice and the fact that um, uh, citizens, uh, you know, embark on jungle justice because they do not trust the system. But I, I think that it's a bit more than that. Um, I also think the dynamics of um, uh, um, the way people react to things, especially in the northern part of the country, may come to place to play, or the way people react to things in. Uh, sort of like semi-urban to rural areas because Nazareth local government area is definitely not Kano, the city, the state capital, you know. Um, sometimes, no matter what you want to do, um, you know, in terms of trust, the people will feel so hurt. Anger could also be a factor to uh, move people to burn down the school. And why would they Anger. do that? It could be people... Why would they do that? Because if they trust that... No, 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 uh, no, no. It, it's, it's, yes, yes. So, to answer your question, anger um, and just the belief that they just need to do something. You understand? Because nothing to, is going to it, happen. It, it, no, no, no. Do it, it, even, even if, no, even if a, the, um, that's, how, that's how it is, especially in the northern part of the country. Even if 
they they, they know. So so how come they, so, so, so how sorry, come the case of yeah, because because even if, if you say even, that, even if they know that the um the 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 culprits will face justice, they want to show their anger. You understand? It's just a way of showing how angry they are and and just venting. Okay, venting. So, uh, uh, it, it's it's dicey. But but the thing is this. Um, uh, you know, the counter state governor uh, said that he will sign the death warrant, uh, or the, you know, the death of order of these um, suspects if they are found guilty in the court, you know, um, uh, places the, the death sentence on them. And also the, the, the first lady, Aisha Buhari, has, you know, subtly or indirectly said that they should be given the death sentence. So obviously you have everyone you know, those in authority saying that this should go. Even President Boyer said something about it. No, you know, so, no, so, so, no, so the what is, what is yeah. even, the, the question now is what is even giving a, a proprietor of a school? Now, you're not talking about some random individual that's in one particular space. This is a proprietor of a school, a private school for that matter. Yeah. What, what actually would give him the guts? To go yeah, ahead to, that's, en that's, that's to engage in kidnapping you know, the child you know, asking, and getting money for it. This it is online. because yeah. of how they have seen how the government has responded to the issue of kidnapping, banditries, and all of that. If the law had taken its course, if people see that people are punished for mm -hmm. these crimes, they mm -hmm. would take a lesson. But yeah, because uh, we um, have been very lackadaisical, I, 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 we I haven't think, put our foots yeah. down. We haven't been very. Yeah. I mean, we haven't. We haven't thought about it. It, it doesn't really matter. Does a life of any Nigerian really matter? And uh, so, so we wait for a particular you know, incident that's very special to happen and then we begin to react and make it look yes, like we yes, really yes, care. Yes, indeed. I mean, if you look at the comments, because it's a trending story online, um, people are all commenting about it. Um, yes, indeed, you know, the, the government always will be the first person to blame in situations like this. But, um, um, you know, it's, it's, it's you know, when, when, when this, is, this is really a sick action. It's um, a really a criminal and, and sick, sick action for you to, um, to, to, kill a child who is a student of your school and kidnap a child, first of all. <laughs> and when you kidnap your own student, you poison the student and bury that student in the school. Um, I think this goes beyond really government. You know, you, you have, we have responsibility. Um, sorry, Messi. Um, there are certain things that government can't do. Um, even where you have the most responsible countries, for instance, um, you have the Scandinavian countries, uh, like Norway. I think it is Norway where Andres Breivik uh, murdered so many people, you know. He went into, I think, a synagogue or somewhere. And you have, you have in all the countries that have the best legal systems and the best security systems, you will always have people doing these things. So, so the thing is, this it's unfortunate, but I don't think I'll, I'll pin this on government. No, no, no I'm not, not pinning this on me. government. I'm you know, saying you know, that I'm saying that you, you, this you is have coming, six, six. No, coffee, you, sorry, coffee, Messi, this is have, coming from. As you have, you have, you have sick people. You have people who are coffee, as much who as are, as who are, you know, the, you know, I know that we have people who are criminal and criminally minded and are also sick. Coffee, you know, I know to the that point we have that people they, who are they do sick. these things, and and government will, has never will never be able to police everyone. No, Kofi, um, you're not getting when, when, you're not getting when, the point. The point you are, is, we know that we have your, people who are sick. Private private space. We also have a response. I mean, how will government will government not be spirits? No, now? you're not. You're not even getting the okay, point. This so, is where so I'm me. coming from. The point yes. is not because we don't have sick people. Mm -hmm. The point is the people have seen how government have treated people who are engaging in these activities. Okay. Have you seen how you we have, have treated have kidnapping? Point. And that's what I'm point. saying. Yeah. Because someone feels that you could... No, so at what point did he decide to kill the girl? Because he felt like he's collected the ransom, he was going to release the girl. But at some point, he discovered that the girl had noticed. Well, so why did well. he even engage in that? Because he felt like this is actually a lucrative business. I can engage, I can get out. People are getting out. That's a proprietor of a school. So it just shows you that because, I mean, we can get away with all of this thing, so why don't I get, so, get myself so, so, involved so in it? Have you, have, so it goes you... beyond even the fact that people are sick. But when people begin to see that when they commit crimes, there are penalties and the government is very stiff and everyone is on top of the issue, then maybe people will become less sick. And another, another aspect of this, you know, is the, um, the of course, the calls for swift justice, the calls for, um, uh, you know, uh, for the death sentence on these people. And the governor of Kano State coming out to say, I will not hesitate um, to, that's Ganduje, to sign his dead warrant on when it's if he's convicted by a it doesn't solve the problem um, it's a good uh, one but, but doesn't solve the problem the the other thing that stands out is the fact that he has uh, revoked the licenses of all private schools um in kano state um i mean schools are still in session right yeah 
they are still in session and students are preparing, of course, you go to school to prepare to write exams. Um, if the governor of Kano State, some people have been asking, and I'm looking at some comments, um, if the governor of Kano State um, has gone ahead to revoke the licenses of all private schools because of this, um, does it mean that the schools will not be allowed to operate? It's a question people are asking. Does it mean that the students will have to go home? And uh, for how long will it take for these schools, all of them to reapply? Then government has to go and certify the schools, which means the government will go to each school. The governor has formed a committee uh, comprising uh, the Ministry of Justice in Kano State, uh, the Department of State Services, the National Security and Civil Defense Corps, NSCDC, and other security agencies, I reckon the police will be there, uh, as part of this committee to go and recertify the schools, revalidate these schools. I think that that means they'll be going, either going to the schools or they'll be sitting somewhere and the officials will come to ask them some questions. But, but for me, question on my mind, based off of what I've seen online is, um, when, when you, you, you're, see, you're seizing or revoking the license of all schools, all private schools in the state, you know, effectively, probably effectively rendering all students to be at home till that is that is solved. Um, does, does that solve any problem? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Then, then when, when the members of the committee go to revalidate or to recertify these schools, um, are they going to be using a scanner to know who's, which teacher, or which proprietor, which headmaster has, has a good heart or a bad heart? You understand? How will they know? So, I, I mean, some people are saying this is just a governor is trying to do something to make people see that he's working, and it's probably not the right move. Another thing people have pointed out very quickly, Mercy, is that um, uh, most of the voices that are uh, coming out condemning this, most, are from the northern part of the country. And that we have seen the politicization or regionalization of tragedy in Nigeria. You look at the Sylvester Romani uh, situation, um, you had people from the Ijo, uh, ethnic nationality predominantly condemning that. But we have to move on um, to another, another, another trending story, Mercy. But, but this is really sad. I understand how you feel. Well, um, I don't feel any way. It's just that, you know, government needs to wake up and sort the issue of security across the entire country. Now, Seashell is also on the news, and that's because terrorists... I beg your pardon. Because we're talking security, I guess we're just thinking that everything with a T has to do with terrorists. Mm. Uh, terrorists who have actually visited have complained, especially Nigerians have subject, been subjected to uh, showing the account details. I mean, being financially capable of sorting themselves while in the course of the country. Mm. And you want to say seashell is a country in East Africa. A lot of people are saying, what's going on? Africa, Africa always at, you know, on top of the story. But uh, so that happened because uh, there's a tweet. Uh, someone took to Twitter to say, what am I hearing about seashell? Makes Nigerians to go to ATM to show the balance uh, in their account before they are let into the country. And if you're from another country, uh, you know, there was a request that you share your experience. A lot of persons shared their experience uh, from, you, you found out that it was not just Nigerians, Kenyans, those from Ghana, amongst others, shared their experience of how they're being treated when they get to Seashell. You need to also know that Seashell is um, very, very, is a tourist destination uh, because they have a lot of natural um, reserves, national parks, what have you. It's a beautiful place to actually visit. But persons have actually questioned this attitude. And even though I know a lot of people want to make it look like it's about the Nigerian thing, but it's not necessarily a Nigerian mm. experience. So we have, we have more chivios uh, on, on Twitter. Um, who was uh, very, very prominent during the NSAS protest, um, tweeting um, what she says, what am I hearing? Seychelles makes Nigerians go to the ATM to show uh, the balance in their bank account before they are led into the country, huh? Um, that, that, that tweet would a bit, be a bit uh, technically wrong if it is done to you know, citizens of other countries. You know, we in the media, we write, so we know how to write a story, a headline, um, not to give the wrong impression. So is this being done to Nigerians only, or has this been done to people from other African countries? I'd like to know, you know, but, but that's, I, I don't think uh, Mo um, intends to, to, to deceive anybody. She's just saying what she's heard and how she feels. But um, she says, if you're from another country and this happened to you, please kindly share under this thread. Uh, it would be interesting to see if other nationals are asked to this as well. So obviously she's trying to get information. Um, so, so, I mean, a very interesting situation. I mean, we've had 
uh, you know, other countries as well ask you to show them your statement of account if you're applying for a visa. But it's quite strange um, to see that you're asked to go to the ATM and to show the balance in your in your, on, your, on your card. You know, it's 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 kind of strange. I mean, if the UK they ask you for your your statement of account, you have to show it to them. And you can also make their checks as well. But um, um, I, I've seen some interesting comments online. One, 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 one Nigerian who commented says, uh, I blame Nigeria, not Seychelles. If home is good, why travel? How many times have you seen uh, Seychelles citizens on your street? The street, you know, that's the one comment that I saw. Um, uh, you know, and someone says, um, as it stands, uh, Seychelles has the has highest HDI in Africa. Um, this does not come by accident. I guess Seychelles is watching out for Seychelles. They obviously do not rate Africans. Their target is non-African tourists. My question is, who watches out for Nigerian Nigeria and Nigerians? Um, all right. So, so these are some of the comments. Another person said, uh, first, you should know the country uh nigeria doesn't command fear any longer seychelles is a tourist point since the government of nigeria doesn't respect its citizens uh, what do you expect other countries to do so here we go again government being blamed uh so, for so, something so, like this so the, the point is uh you would always have this is not about nigerians from the comment that we have seen i mean it cuts across almost every tourist that has visited and then they're being asked to show but is that what should be i mean should they have a better way because we've also had reports saying uh, you're being mandated to show some financial survival mm -hmm. before you're able to getting us mm -hmm. a, a tourist destination. But that's the much we can actually take at this point for uh, top trending. would we'll definitely uh, come with more conversations tomorrow as regards top trending. When we return, we'll head straight to the papers this morning and check out some of the big stories. Please stay tuned.